The film opens with a small family who appear to be enjoying a good time together. Craig is a doctor, and Elise works as a real estate agent. Craig and Elise must share chores in turn to care for their six-year-old son, Benjamin, due to their differing daily schedules. That morning, Elise had to go to work as usual, while Craig took care of Benjamin. Craig invites Benjamin to play ball in the yard after his wife has left. But when Craig notices the weather is getting hotter that morning, he goes back into the house first to retrieve Benjamin's sun protection cream. Unfortunately, he is utterly unaware that a stranger in a car parked near his yard is keeping an eye on Benjamin. When Craig gets inside, a man from the van kidnaps Benjamin and flees with him as Craig watches. He tries to chase the truck but he is unable to keep up with the truck's speed, so he instantly takes out his car and begins pursuing the kidnapper. Just as he is ready to call the cops, he discovers that his cell phone has been left inside the house. He eventually comes to a stop near an overpass, but the kidnapper's truck has vanished from his sight. Traffic becomes chaotic as Craig attempts to stop each car one at a time to borrow a cell phone. Elise, who has just arrived home from work, is understandably astonished to discover her house crammed with police officers and media. A detective tries to persuade Elise to sit down first and discuss her child's kidnapping. However, this only adds to Elise's panic, as she yells violently and asks where her child is. After several hours, the police have yet to obtain any information on the motive for the kidnapping. Elise begins to worry why the kidnapper hasn't called them to demand a ransom yet. At this time, she begins to suspect that Benjamin was kidnapped not for money, but because of the behavior of someone who enjoys the action, known as a psychopath. Meanwhile, Benjamin, who has been imprisoned in a basement chamber, screams in terror and calls for his father and mother. Benjamin's cry irritates the madman named John Kozlowski. As a result, John, disturbed by the ruckus, enters the room with the intention of killing Benjamin. Later in the day, Two police officers named Patterson and Alvarez arrived to John's residence after getting multiple reports from the local neighborhood. At this point, John opens the door to his residence without allowing them inside to observe what's going on. But Alvarez, who is disappointed with John's response, attempts to determine whether John has a child or not. At this point, Alvarez discovers that there are children's clothes inside the house, and they suspect John is hiding something. The two of them, now suspicious, seek for permission to go inside and investigate the residence, but John refuses. As a result, the two police officers are forced to take more severe action against him. It takes them some time to examine the house, room by room, until Patterson uncovers an access door that goes to the basement. When he enters the basement chamber, he only finds old, worn, and dirty furniture. But the cop is still convinced that something is wrong with the house. He also discovers bloodstains and tangled instruments like drills, screwdrivers, and hammers that have been covered with blood. When Patterson unlocks the door to another room, he is shocked to see Benjamin's lifeless body. Following that, Elise hears the phone ring and forces herself to take it up. It is sad for her to learn that Benjamin has been found dead, and as a mother, Elise is unable to speak until her body weakens. As they make their way to the hospital, she and her husband remain hopeful that the child is not Benjamin. However, as Craig and Elise arrive at the hospital, they are forced to acknowledge that the boy is indeed Benjamin. In a matter of hours, their once blissful life is flipped upside down. Craig and Elise, who are still dejected and frustrated, try to find justice so that the psychopath is punished as severely as possible for his actions. However, the court's judgment is not as predicted and John is sentenced to only 25 years in prison. Craig and Elise appear to be upset and dissatisfied by the judge's judgment in their case. Elise is overcome with emotion and requests Craig's assistance in obtaining a gun, to which Craig responds that shooting the perpetrator will not change anything. Elise then claims that they have failed to become parents, and that they must do something for their son's dignity. Craig and Elise's mental state seem to have deteriorated over the course of several days. The problem worsens as they cease to care about each other. Furthermore, they are often fighting just because they disagree on who should be blamed. In the middle of difficulties, Elise resolves to stay with Craig for a bit to calm herself down. Following his wife's departure, Craig appears to be in a state of desperation, 
believing that there is no future or hope for reuniting their family as it once was. Until he eventually decides to end his life by injecting something into his arm, but when he sees Benjamin's photo directly in front of him, he feels a whisper that increases his faith and reminds him not to commit that irresponsible deed. It transports him back to a period when the three of them were still together, and he recalls how happy his small family was to live together with their cherished child. At this time, he visits his wife's home to bring her in to avenge the loss of their beloved kid. Craig and Elise begin their action by traveling to the hospital, where Craig is now employed. Craig steps out of the car and makes his way past the various medical personnel. He then discovers an ambulance whose door is not locked. Craig enters the ambulance, takes some medicine, and places it in a tiny bag. The next day, at a prison, John Kozlowski would begin the process of being transferred to another institution with more strict security. Craig and Elise, on the other hand, approach John, who is being led by police, from a distance and follow the vehicle to carry out their plan. On their journey to the new jail, the prisoner transport vehicle stops at a petrol station, where one of the police officers goes into a convenience store to get a few cups of coffee. Elise then gets out of the car and enters the convenience shop, where they carry out their plan. Craig then catches up with Elise and raises a scene at the cashier to draw everyone's attention. The journey then resumes, and they continue to follow the prisoner car while waiting for the drug to react. Craig, as a doctor, is confident that the police officers who take the medicine will experience side effects. Their strategy works, as the prisoner transport vehicle comes to a stop in the middle of the road after 30 minutes. The police officers hastily exit the van because they are feeling stomach issues. Craig then swiftly enters that vehicle and drives away with the prisoner as his wife follows closely after in the car. Craig, who is driving at high speeds, accidentally smashes a deer crossing in front of him as they near the forest's border. Fortunately, Craig's face was only slightly injured as a result of the collision. They then notice a prisoner covered in blood laying on the ground. They then transport him to a plantation house far from the city where they live. He then begins to awaken again, and Craig informs him that he will be given medicine. They are likely to continue tormenting John in order to prevent him from dying by allowing the medicine to keep him awake for several weeks. The next morning, while they were cleaning the car for bloodstains, Elise received a phone call from Detective Berger. The investigator informs her that the prisoner transport had an accident, and John has escaped. Elise pretends to be astonished to learn this, despite the fact that they are the masterminds behind the situation. Craig's mind seemed to be troubled by his son's death in the middle of the night, with memories of Benjamin rushing back to him. As a result, Craig's sense of loss drives him to express his rage once more by approaching John and inserting his blazing cigarette into his stomach, causing severe pain. The torment resumes the next morning, with Craig soldering last night's cigarette burns onto John's stomach. Elise, hearing John's screams of pain, begins to feel horrible about what they have done to him. Craig tries to persuade Elise that what they are doing now is not in proportion to what he has done to their child. After stating that, Craig appears dissatisfied and resumes his actions by injecting something into John's neck. It comes out that the medicine will produce cramping in John's muscles. The next morning, as they harass John in the basement again, they are startled by the sound of footsteps on the plank floor above them. It turns out that a man and his dog have entered the house and the man lives nearby. The man suspects Elise's activities at the property and informs her that the house belongs to a man named Frank Joseph. Elise, a real estate agent, deftly handles the situation by informing the man that the house is being sold. In addition, she is an agent who is currently waiting for his client to inspect the residence. Fortunately, the man believes Craig when he appears to be a buyer and leaves them immediately. Meanwhile, Detective Berger is notified by one of the police officers that the prisoner transport van has been located. The detective rushes to the scene of the accident to determine what happened. Craig and Elise, who are tormenting John again, are taken aback when he claims he doesn't recall anything other than the last vehicle accident. He even claims that he doesn't remember who he is, which could be due to the hammering in his head from the collision. Elise keeps refusing to believe what John is telling them. However, they both start to feel bad about tormenting the man, 
who has no idea why he is being tortured. But Elise is still unwilling to let him go since she is convinced that he is lying. They then attempt to prove the man is lying by injuring John's leg and forcing him to say their son's name. Later that night, Elise awakens from her sleep and goes to the restroom. Meanwhile, in the basement, John, who has been shackled, tries to free himself. With a little effort, he eventually breaks free, and the handcuffs that tie his legs and hands are removed. After that, he goes upstairs to leave, but Elise, who is sitting on the toilet, is shocked when the bedroom door slowly opens. She is horrified and terrified, but all she can do is stare at her husband, who is still asleep. At this point, she has no choice except to attempt to attack the man behind the toilet. Elise moves gently with an iron pipe in her hands, knocking John senseless. Craig is shocked awake, and they hastily transport the man back to the basement. Unfortunately, the man awakens again and kicks Craig down the stairs. However, instead of attacking Elise, he flees the scene. Police, on the other hand, are conducting a search around the scene. Fortunately for them, they have finally apprehended John, who is attempting to flee. At this moment, everything has been disclosed, and the man being detained is, of course, John Kozlowski, who will be sentenced to twenty-five years in prison for murdering a kid. However, the major issue is that in the hijacked van, there was another guilty party named Patrick Galligan, who has been sentenced to eighteen months in prison for tax evasion and fraud. As we can see, this is the guy who was meant to be tortured by Craig and Elise at home. Craig and Elise, on the other hand, are taken aback when they discover that the man they are looking for has committed suicide. They also find a piece of paper containing a message scribbled by the man. He states that he is a disliked person and expresses regret over it. Furthermore, he claims that he deserves what has been done to him, but he is unable to bear the torment any longer, so he chose to terminate his life. Craig and Elise, who are unaware of this, are surprised to discover that their vengeance has failed because the man they tormented all day is not John Kozlowski, the man who murdered their kid, but Patrick Galligan. Thanks for watching. If you are new don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.